Hansen from University of York. <coughs> and then we'll have a go at getting this to work. and I uh, run the digital library at the University of York, which is um, a multimedia repository. And this presentation is just a little story of how we had a GIST project last year to put some linked data on the web. Um, I've not done timings for this, so I might be a bit staccato in places. Um, so I wanted to tell it like a story. So we had a little project at York, um, it, funded by GIST. It was six months last year. Um, it was all about putting um, data for a really rich data set on the web. There's a slide going to come up to just explain what it, what, what it is, so I'll just kind of delay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so this is the data set, it's called the London Art World. Um, it's, uh, there's been a chap researching this for several years, he's got about 10 years worth of work ahead of him, and he's, he's looking at um, the art market in this period, so it's not so much about who was painting, it's what was happening to artwork, who was buying it, who was selling it, who died and left it to people. Um, so I don't know whether this is actually going to do my transitions, it is brilliant. Um, so this is what we put on the web, it's a simple database driven website, um, it, it presents information about art sales and all those other things, the people and the places, um, but what it doesn't do is allow machines to find stuff out. So this is the limitation that we're trying to deal with with linked data. So how does a machine know that this is an art sale, um, how does it know that, that these are places and people that um, how, do, how do we make this kind of information that a person can read really easily um, much more readily available to machines? And then from there, how do we let people do interesting things with it? Well, linked uh, open data is certainly one of the potential answers. So linked open data is about um, describing real world things and the relationships between them in, in a machine readable way. Um, that's kind of my, my summary of what linked open data is. And actually then making links between things. Um, so uh, RDF, um, I'm not going to go into any detail because I don't have time, but RDF stands for the Resource Description Framework. It's a way of identifying resources on the web, describing those resources, and then it uses a model that's based on triples, and we've probably heard a bit about triples at, at this conference. So this is just trying to kind of show the notion of the triple, so it's all based around the notion of subject, predicate, which is the relationship, an object, so these are some kind of fake examples of how our data could look. So an artist occupied a place, an artist painted a painting, um, a painting was sold in a sale. All of them would be identified with URIs. Um, why is that not good enough? Because if we just put our data out in, um, in a kind of non-standard way, how will someone else understand it? That's where ontologies come in. So ontologies are a standard way of describing st stuff for a given domain. Uh, Dublin Cause is a very good example of a really simple ontology. <coughs> um, we shouldn't just put our data out without an ontology. We can take one of two approaches. Uh, we can either use terms from an existing ontology, such as Dublin Core, or create and publish our own terms using standard approaches. Uh, we decided to go for the latter approach, um, and I'll carry on because the next slide is quite dense. So we created what we call an event-driven ontology based on two existing ontologies. Uh, event driven because our data set actually is all about events, it's not about things, it's about what we're selling where, so, so the event thing is important for us. Uh, we wanted our data to be really rich and specific, but then also be, to be understandable, so if we say something very, um, very specific uh, about, say, an art sale, you'd still know it was an event. Um, the whole concept of linking is really important, that's about making connections not just within our data, but between our data and other data sets. Um, we didn't do a lot of linking, I think I said that on the first slide, it's not very linked yet. But um, we started to do links between the, the artists and the people in our data set um, to VIAF, which is an, an international name authority um, service, and also some of the places to GeoNames, which is a ge geographic ontology, um, by using this concept that we have in RDF called Same As. Um, how did we make the data? Well, the data came in, um, I think, six very big spreadsheets with handcrafted URNs to link uh, rows in one sheet to another, another spreadsheet. So we did that all with uh, cleaning up the database with various scripts. Uh, the data, we put it into a database and then we extracted <coughs> the documents out. Uh, we used a document format called Turtle, which is um, 
it's, it's just a way of expressing RDF. It's, it's much simpler than the RDF XML format. There are about 40,000 documents for these different entities, sale, people, places, artworks and sources. Uh, we put all of those documents in our digital library and we index them in something called Cinderche, which is a semantic web search engine. This is just an example document just to show that you've got a subject, predicate, um, and an object, and there's, there's various of those in that document, so that was just to, just to make it a little bit clearer. Um, and this is where the linking comes in at the end. Uh, so this was one approach, it was an experimental approach, that it's not perfect, I'm not necessarily advocating our approach. What we wanted to do was put linked data out there using the systems we'd already got, um, and we did successfully do that. Um, we want to do a lot more of this. Um, why? Well, at the moment, linked data is a bit of a leap of faith. You've got to put data out before anyone can start doing anything with it, and there's a lot of work going on at the moment to put data out. There's less work going on in the consumption there, but I, I think we, I, I see a future where if, if, every, if everyone puts this data out there, we can make all these really interesting connections between the data. Uh, this is one of my kind of take-home librarian messages. Put out high quality data because if you put out high quality, you can do high quality and low barrier things. If it's low quality, you can only ever do low quality things with it. Um, our data was very good quality, I, I feel, in, in, in many places, not always. So just going back to the original um, slide, I had, we had a little project in York. Um, if you look in GeoNames, there are um, over 70,000 results for York. Um, so what I really ought to have said um, was something that will come up in about 10 seconds. <laughs> so it's better when I can probably press the button, I don't know. So this is really what I should have said, that we have a little project in Geo Names 26, whatever. Um, and that's one of the points about URIs. If you identify everything with URIs, it, 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 you're identifying the exact thing. There's no kind of um, vagueness about whether this name's that person or that person or that person. Uh, and I, I believe that that's it. Just some credits at the end. There were various people involved in the project, so it wasn't all my work. Uh, and, and I think to about it there. So, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you very much. So, Julia wins the prize for getting two bonus slides in there. We weren't expecting. <laughs> so, all the better. Okay, does anyone have any questions we can get to Julia? Short side, I don't know, must be wanting a cup of coffee. Okay, now, thank you. Our final presentation of the day is, um, is going to be quite intriguing. Um, you may have noticed that the presenter isn't here. Um, and that's because we have a, a Petra Culture presentation on the use of YouTube, which has been sent to us as a YouTube video. 